Hi, so we are back with the second video for class 27 if you're in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday class and the second video for class 20 in the Tuesday, Thursday class. So, so far we have been talking about costs for property, plant, and equipment assets. So these plant assets are things like the building, the land, equipment, machinery, and we talked about how the cost that goes on the books is everything that goes into getting it ready to use. Um, then we talked a little bit about the fact that there are some costs after the thing is ready, after the thing is in use. Some costs extend the life, make that equipment better, and we add those to the value of the asset. And some things are just repairs and maintenance, so we expense those. So we had this idea of capital versus revenue expenditures. So a capital expense increases the asset value because the asset's worth more. We've put a new engine in it or we've uh, redone the building in some way that now it's all wireless and modern or something, right? We've done this capital expenditure. We capitalize it by put, adding it to the asset. We change the oil in the fleet of vehicles. That's just normal repairs and maintenance. That's an expense. Now, there's a special kind of expense that's not capitalized, right? And it's not a revenue expenditure or an expense for repairs and maintenance. It's depreciation. So we've already talked a little bit about depreciation. In this section, we're going to talk about how you actually calculate depreciation. So that's the difference for this. We already know depreciation exists. We know that depreciation is expensing an asset over time. So it's an expense for depreciation and we don't subtract that off the asset. We create this contra asset account called accumulated depreciation and we use that to actually come up with a new book value for our asset. So in this section our next learning objective is to learn how to actually calculate that depreciation. So, the first idea is depreciation is the allocation of a plant's asset's cost to expense it over its useful life. Depreciation matches the expense against the revenue generated from using the asset to measure net income. All assets except for land wear out as they are used. In addition, physical factors like age and weather uh, can cause depreciation of assets. Some assets such as computers and software may become obsolete before they wear out. An asset is considered obsolete when a newer asset can perform the job more efficiently than the old. Depreciation is not a process of valuation. Businesses do not record depreciation based on changes in the asset's market value. Depreciation does not mean that the business sets aside cash to replace an asset when it is used up. Depreciation has nothing to do with cash. So, depreciation really is just matching the expense of that asset, whether it's a building, a machine, a vehicle, furniture, computer, something long lived, at least a few years. You just cut it up, the cost, into little pieces and, and depreciate it out. So you've already paid the money for that machine, so the cash went when you bought it. Uh, so it's not about cash, it's just about expensing it over time. So what do we use to compute depreciation if we don't go with market value? I mean, right, you think, well, if a car is worth a certain amount, you can sell it for, that's what it's worth, keep it on the books at that. No. Remember, we have our cost principle. We put it on the books at cost, then we depreciate it out over time. So that's what we're doing, nothing to do with market value of the thing. To compute depreciation for a period, we need to consider three primary factors estimated useful life, the capitalized cost of the asset, and the estimated residual value of the asset at the end of its estimated useful life. The useful life is the length of the service period expected of an asset. 
It may be expressed in time, such as months or years, or usage, such as units produced, or hours for machinery, or miles driven for a truck. The residual value is the expected value of a depreciable asset at the end of its useful life. So basically, we're going to take that cost, we're going to figure out, well, what will it be worth at the end, the residual value, and we'll divide it up over some kind of units, either the years we expect it to be around, the miles we expect to drive it, the hours we expect to run the machine. So we're just dividing up that cost over whatever it is we think it's going to get used up by. So, depreciable cost. <clears throat> when a company decides to dispose of an asset, the company sells it or scraps it. The residual value, R-E-S-I-D-U-A-L, residual value, is the amount the company expects to receive when it disposes of the asset. Residual value can sometimes be zero if a company does not expect to receive anything when disposing of an asset. If a company plans on trading in an asset for a new asset, the residual value will be the expected trade-in value. Estimated residual value is not depreciated because the company expects to receive this amount at the end. The depreciable cost is the cost of a plant asset minus its residual value. So you see this formula here. So when I'm trying to figure out, okay, I know I'm going to divide out that cost across hours, years, something like that, mileage. But what is the actual cost? Well, I take that cost I put it on the books at, right? So that's where you learned how to do the cost first. The cost on the books minus what I think I'll sell it for at the end, the residual value, and that's what I have to use up, right? So it's what am I going to use up? The cost minus the residual value, got to use that up. So there are a few different depreciation methods. So companies pick different depreciation methods. There are three common depreciation methods. Straight line depreciation, units of production depreciation, and double declining balance depreciation. As we work through each method, we will use the following information. Smart Touch Learning purchases a truck on January 1, 2017. The truck has a cost of 41,000 and an estimated residual value of 1,000. The estimated useful life of the truck is five years or 100,000 miles. All right, so we got a truck, it costs us 41,000. We think at the end of time, when we're done using that truck, we'll be able to sell it or trade it in for about 1,000 bucks. We expect that'll come about at five years or 100,000 miles. All right, so let's look at the first method, the straight line method, um, the simplest, most obvious kind of depreciation. Under the straight line method, the residual value is deducted from the depreciable cost <clears throat> and then divided by the estimated useful life of the asset. The straight line method is a depreciation method that allocates an equal amount of depreciation each period. Straight line depreciation equals cost minus residual value divided by useful life. So pretty simple, if you have a $41,000 truck and it's going to be worth a thousand at the end, your, your cost is going to be uh, 40,000, right? You're going to have a depreciable amount of 40,000. 40,000 divided by five, 8,000. So that's pretty straight, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. What, what are you going to depreciate? the 40,000, not the whole 41, just the 40,000, and you're going to use it up over five years, so 8,000 per year. All right, so that means every year you're going to depreciate 8,000, and you're going to add 8,000 expense, and you're going to increase accumulated depreciation by 8,000. So let's look at what that would look like 
on the books. So, the adjusting entry at the end of the year to record the depreciation looks like this. In the smart touch learning example, the depreciable cost is 40000 divided by an estimated useful life of five years. The annual depreciation for the truck is 8000 per year. So every year, you'll just go in, you'll go depreciation expense truck, accumulated depreciation truck, expenses, always debits, accumulated depreciation being a contra asset is a credit. So there you go, you put them on the books, very, very, very simple. So what do we do with these? Well, once you get them on the books, you got to report them on either the income statement, the balance sheet, somewhere, right? So depreciation expense is reported on the income statement. So that's just one of those expenses, right? As you look down, revenues minus expenses, your depreciation expense is one of the expenses. Accumulated depreciation is a contra account that is reported on the balance sheet. So we've learned that when you're when you're doing your uh, balance sheet, your classified balance sheet, the plant assets, you'll have the name of the plant asset, in this case truck, right below it. You'd have accumulated depreciation truck, right? So you'd see 41000 because that's what the truck is worth, right? It's worth, its cost was 41000 So it costs 41000 minus the accumulated depreciation, 8000 So the truck book value is the difference, 41000 minus 8000 So right now, after the first year depreciation, the book value is 33000 The book value is reported on the balance sheet. So here's the schedule. This is what that would look like for the whole time you own the truck. So if you're estimating how much interest you'll take, what it's going to be, you just would set it up like this, asset cost, right? 41,000, so that's what it's on the books at. First year eight, second year eight, so every year you're taking 8,000, so it's giving you a new book value. And at the end, you'd have $1,000 left. All right, so a straight line depreciation schedule for the truck is shown in exhibit 9-5. The final column on the right shows the asset's book value, which is cost less accumulated depreciation. Notice that the depreciation expense amount is the same every year. And the depreciation, accumulated depreciation is the sum of all depreciation recorded to date for the depreciable asset. An asset is used, accumulated depreciation increases, and book value decreases. So as we use this asset up, the book value is going down, which makes sense, right? The, more, the longer you have a truck, the less it's worth. The more you drive it, the less it's worth. The end of its useful life, the asset is said to be fully depreciated. An asset's final book value is its residual value. So you stop depreciating once you get to that residual value. Okay, let's talk about another method, the units of production method. So you can imagine with a truck, how it's used up depends on how much you drive it too, right? So you can drive it very little, so it's not used up that much. You drive it a lot, it gets used up faster. All right, so we have this units of production, this alternate way of using up an asset. Um, a lot of machines, uh, like, like if you have a lathe or, or some kind of tool that creates something, it, the longer you use that tool, the, m the more it gets used up. So units of production used for things like engines, uh, machines, vehicles. The units of production method allocates a varying amount of depreciation each year based on an asset's usage. Units of production depreciates by units rather than by year. A unit of output can be miles, units, hours, or output depending on which unit type best defines the asset's use. When a plant asset's usage varies every year, the units of production method does a better job of matching expenses to revenue. So if you have a machine that produces a product, it's so easy to imagine a machine that makes glass bottles, right? You put some glass in there and it shapes them and forms them. The more you use that machine, the more bottles you make. So you might say per unit, if I turn out 50 glass bottles, not doing very much. If I turn out 500,000 glass bottles, I've used it a lot. So you're going to depreciate it based on how much you use it. 
So let's talk about that truck. Continuing with the truck example, the truck is estimated to be driven 20,000 miles the first year, 30,000 the second, 25,000 the third, 15 the fourth, and 10,000 the fifth for a total useful life of 100,000 miles. So we think we're going to drive at 100,000. We're estimating these different amounts of driving, and we're going to depreciate it based on how many miles gets driven. So first of all, you have to figure out how much per unit that you're depreciating. So in this case, it's miles, so how much per mile? If this was a machine that you were using hours, you'd have to figure out how much per hour. If it was some kind of a molding machine that makes something, you'd have to figure out how much per thing it makes and count the, how many things it makes. So the first step is to compute the depreciation per unit of use. In this case, the asset is expected to have a useful life of 100,000 miles. The depreciable cost of the truck is $40,000, so the truck will be depreciated 40 cents per mile for every mile driven. So we just take our 41,000 cost minus our 1,000 residual value, means, well, we got to use up or expense 40,000. If we figure it's going to be 100,000 miles, 40,000 divided by 100,000 equals 40 cents per mile. So for every mile driven, that's how we'll depreciate it each year. In step two, we com compute the amount of depreciation for the current period based on the pre depreciation per unit and the actual use. In this case, 40 cents per mile for 20,000 miles results in depreciation in year one of 8,000. That is the same depreciation given by the straight line method, but that's only a coincidence because the units of production method is so unpredictable, we have no idea how much depreciation will be in year two. It might be as much as 32,000 if the truck is driven as much as 80,000 miles, or zero if the truck is not used at all in year two. So let's look at the depreciation schedule for units of production. So you remember, in straight line, every year was the same. Right, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, because we just took our 40,000, divided it by 5, 8,000. In this example, um, we've taken our 41,000. The first year we drove 20,000 miles, so that was 8,000, which left us that same book value of 33,000. The second year we drove 30,000 miles, which meant, means we had to depreciate it 12,000. So our accumulated depreciation is now 20,000, and our book value is 21, and so forth until we get to the bottom where we have our $1,000 residual value left. So we've used up our 100,000 miles in various amounts, and we depreciate it 40 cents per mile every mile, and just at the end of each year we count how many miles and depreciate it that way. Let's talk about the double declining balance method. So here is what we call an accelerated depreciation. right? So sometimes you want to expense it a little faster than straight line. So, so we expense more at the beginning than at the end. And that kind of makes sense. right? We all know that when you buy a brand new car, it depreciates really fast at first, and then it settles out at some level amount. You know, it's just an old car now, so it doesn't really depreciate much anymore. But boy, when you drive it off that lot, it's no longer a brand new car. It's automatically worth a lot less. So, accelerated depreciation is a method that expenses more of an asset's cost near the start of its useful life and less at the end of its useful life. The main accelerated method of depreciation is the double declining balance method. The double declining balance method is an accelerated depreciation method that computes annual depreciation by multiplying the depreciable assets decreasing book value by a constant percentage that is two times the straight line depreciation rate. Okay. So you start with that straight line that we, we came up with in the first place, right? So we said, okay, five years. Um, so we've turned that into a rate, and we just double it. That's all that means. So let's look at this chart that's kind of telling us that, right? Uh, so the other interesting thing is 
that for double declining balance, if you'll notice, we're not going to take out the uh, residual value. What we're going to do is just stop depreciating it once we get to the residual value. So that's a slightly different thing from straight line or units of production. We just start with the whole 41,000, depreciate it by double the, the single year rate. And then once we get down to the last year, we just stop depreciating it. So first you have to figure out the straight line rate, right? which we've already done. right? It's uh, five years, so that means it's one-fifth, or I would probably think of it as 20%. So the first year of owning the truck, the calculation would be the cost accumulated depreciation, so 41,000, times two, times one divided by useful life, so 41,000 minus zero, times two, times one-fifth, equals 16,400. So right, we don't do we don't remove the residual value. Everything is always going to be double. So you've always got times two, times one fifth equals sixteen. All right. So in double declining balance, every year is going to change a little bit. So you've got to recalculate it based on your new book value. All right. So it's really important. So the first thing you do is figure out how much depreciation. All right, so 16,400. So 41,000 minus 16,400 equals 24,6. That's our new book value, 24,6. So it's a lot lower. The book value is a lot lower. The depreciation is a lot higher than uh, uh, the uh, straight line. So for double declining balance, you take this book value, the 24,6, and multiply it again by the double the rate, so 2 times 1 divided by 5, right, or 40%. Uh, All right, so 2 times 1 divided by 5 equals 26, 4 times 2 divided by 5 equals 98, 40. All right, so now you take the 24, 6 minus 98, 40, which is going to give you a accumulated depreciation of 26, 240 and a book value of uh, 14, 760. And so you do this all the way down until the end until you're going to have a thousand left. So at the beginning of year one, the book value was 41,000. At the beginning of year two, the book value is now only 24,6. It'll continue to change the book value of the asset each year until the book value reaches the estimated residual value. Once the book value reaches the residual value, we cease computing any additional depreciation. So in that last year, we just stop and we just depreciate the remaining amount. All right, so let's compare how we do the depreciation. Exhibit 9-8 on page 486 compares the annual depreciation expenses for the three depreciation methods. Which method is best depends on the asset. A business should match an asset's expense against the revenue that the asset produces. In general, the straight line method is used when asset generates revenue evenly over time. All right, so if it's a building and you're just using the building, people come and go, it's just used all the time over the next 20 years, great, just over 20 years depreciate it. Um, the units of production method is used when the average usage varies each year. Right? So if the average usage varies each year, so you've got a machine and it produces bottles. And sometimes you have a big contract, so you have to produce a bunch of bottles one year, and sometimes that contract goes down so you don't produce very many bottles. Well, then using that unit of production thing could work. Or like with the truck, the mileage varies. Sometimes we have a lot of deliveries, sometimes we don't. Maybe use mileage instead of years. All right, and the double declining balance is used when the asset produces more revenues in the early years. So if you've got something that makes a lot of revenues in the early years, so you could imagine you have a machine that creates a very specific type of technology. Let's say you have a machine that makes something like these little USB drives, and it makes these USB drives, and you know that really technology is going to change so even though this machine makes 8 gig USB drives 
and you're going to sell all of them, this, most of them this year, a few next year, but then in the next year, you want so many because people will be buying 50 gig hard, hard drives, right? So you know this is a very limited technological use. It'll still be worth something, but you're not going to make as many going forward because people want something else. So then you might use double declining balance to depreciate that machine real fast. All right. So, you know, I, you want to match your depreciation to how you really use up that asset is the point, right? Because the whole point of depreciation is to match that expense of depreciation to the revenues that asset creates. So let's talk about reporting plant assets. So, plant assets are reported at book value on the balance sheet. So remember, on a classified balance sheet, we have our current assets first, then we report our plant assets, and we're going to report them on the balance sheet at book value, which means we have to show the cost, we have to show the accumulated depreciation, subtract them out, and show the difference. Right? Companies may choose to report plant assets as a single amount with a note to the financial statements that provide detailed information, or they may provide detailed information on the face of the statement. The cost of the asset and the related accumulated depreciation should be disclosed. Exhibit 9-9 shows two alternative reporting treatments for plant assets. So on the top, they show you the depreci accumulated depreciation right under plant assets. On part two, they just say plant assets net, so everybody knows that's the accumulated depreciation net out, C notes. And then that note, C note 8, note 8 would have the depreciation schedule and you would be able to look at depreciation there. All right. So in class we'll practice calculating all three of these different methods and I think it's a lot, uh, comes really clear when you actually sit down and calculate them. So work on that homework and we'll do it in class and um, I'll see you there.